four o'clock, so I'm going to call the meeting to order. Um, Joey is going to read our um, commission introduction. Here we go. This is a public hearing, and we are the Putnam County Planning Commission. We are a designated local planning agency for the county, as described under Title 11, Chapter 163 of the Florida Statutes, and we function under the authority of Articles 11 and 12 of the Putnam County Land Development Code. The primary responsibility of the commission is to serve as an advisory body to hear and make recommend recommendations to the Board of County Commissioners on matters related to provisions of and proposed amendments to the Putnam County Comprehensive Plan and Putnam County Land Development Code. The members of this committee will review each applicant and make a recommendation to the Board of County Commissioners at a regularly scheduled meeting on November 22, 2022. Procedurally, we will call each case by name and number. A member of staff will then briefly explain to us the nature of each request. We will take comments from the applicant or the representative, followed by any public comments concerning the request. Please direct all comments or statements to the commission and not to other people in the audience. Before speaking, we will ask each person to be recognized, come forward to the lectern, and, and identify his or herself by name and address. After all persons wishing to speak have been heard, we will entertain a motion from the commission. This motion will be voted on by the commission members and become our recommendation to the Board of County Commissioners. The Board of County Commissioners will make the final determination regarding the application. Thank you, Joey. Um, I need to ask, is anyone on our commission, any of the members had any ex parte communication or anything they need to disclose regarding any of these three cases that we're going to hear? No. Nope. Um, I do need to disclose that my office is handling the um, sale of the property that's involved in the first two cases. I personally am not involved in it and have no um, gain from it, so I feel I can be objective on that. <clears throat> Madam Chair, I think that will suffice, but for the record, have you heard, seen, or read anything that will interfere with your ability to fairly and impartially uh, decide this matter? No. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Um, so our first case is going to be SM22-002. Oh. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, for the record, Joe Searley with Planning and Development Services. Before we move on to Agenda Item 1, um, last Planning Commission meeting we had a, um, it was rezoning RZ2022. 22-005, Casella White Riley. That's the three sisters that own Lynch's Landing RV Park. Oh. It was tabled to a time certain. I've spoke with them today. They are not ready to move forward. They're doing some title work with the deed restrictions. So I just want to make that known before we go into item number two. Okay. One. Thank you. Okay. So noted. So both item number one and item number two, um, one is a future land use map amendment and rezoning. I will be presenting them uh, concurrently as they are uh, dependent upon one another. Um, so the applications are to amend the future land use map and the zoning map. Um, the applicant is Yeldon S. Hodge. The agent is John Jenkins. Um, the parcel is 11.43 acre vacant parcel located at 751 State Road 207. It main, currently maintains an agricultural uh, future land use designation. The proposal is to uh, amend it to rural center. And the rezoning request is to amend the zoning from agriculture to commercial neighborhood C1 to allow for a retail bait and tackle store. Uh, the, lo the, the location of the parcel is right across the street from the St. John's Mini Storage along two, uh, 207. Predominantly agricultural uses surrounding the parcel um, to the interior uh, north and south of 207. There are some commercial land uses and zoning spread out sporadically along this portion of State Route 207 as there is limited infrastructure uh, however, some, I believe, water is planned along the corridor. Um, the applicant is requesting the, min, the uh, future land use of rural center to allow for commercial uh, C1 zoning. Uh, 
the rural center land use classification is the least intense commercial land use classification in our comprehensive plan, often catering to development in rural areas of the county. Um, the C1 uh, zoning classification has the least, intensil, least intensive uh, commercial zoning designation, the LDC, catering to uh, less intense commercial uses. Here is the aerial. It's the Triangle property. Uh, there's a, it's vacant. It looks like it has maybe an old uh, artificial pond on it that could be utilized for stormwater management. To the south there is the Floral Park uh, subdivision. It's uh, undeveloped. Um, and as you can see to the north, uh, there's mostly agricultural and residential. Uh, caddy corner to this parcel uh, is the St. John's uh, mini storage. As you can see, there's a bit of a hodgepodge of rural residential and commercial land uses uh, right across the street. There is, it's mostly agricultural zoning. Uh, there is some commercial uh, caddy corner to the site. And there's also PUD zoning on the corner there. I don't know if you can see the color. The uh, current future land use and zoning designations don't allow for any commercial uses at all unless they're agricultural in nature. Um, uh, policy A193A3 states that the rural center land use allows for neighborhood commercial use, which would allow for the commercial the C1 zoning. Um, per section uh, 45-81 of the Land Development Code, the commercial neighborhood zoning designation allows for uh, the requested uses, the uh, retail sale of goods by right and aligns with the proposed rural uh, center land use classification. Uh, this parcel is located in a portion of the corridor that has existing sporadic commercial development on lands with both agricultural and commercial land use. It, uh, the pattern of development along this corridor is a mixture of agricultural, residential, and commercial uses. Uh, any mitigation of impacts on surrounding properties, which there probably won't be many, the applicant would be required to provide a 10-foot uh, wide Class A vegetated buffer between the surrounding residential uses. There would also be perimeter buffing, uh, buffering required along all vehicle use areas or parking. And the type of buffing required uh, would be determined at the development review process and could be determined that at that point, based on their site design, that additional buffering may be required. So the staff does recommend approval of both the land use uh, map amendment and the rezoning. Um, I just want to make it known that the land use map amendment would need to be voted on first as that needs to be in place prior to the zoning. But uh, that concludes my presentation. I believe uh, the representative for the applicants here and staff's here to answer any questions. Okay. Are there any questions for staff at this time? Would the applicant like to speak? Okay. Anyone in the audience to speak for or against this? Proposal? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion. I make a motion to approve SM 22 002. We have a motion and a second for approval of SM 22 002. Is there any discussion on the motion? Then I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries 6-0. Thank you. Um, I'll entertain a motion on the second portion of the case. I'll make a motion to approve R22-007. Motion for approval and second. Any discussion? And I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Um, chair votes aye. Um, motion carries. Zero. Thank you. That will go to the county commission on November 22nd. Um, those cases. Thank you. Um, next case is PUD 22-001. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, this is PUD 22-001. This is a major modification to the Midnight Farms PUD. Uh, the applicant is Midnight Florida LLC, Simon David LLC, Midnight Florida Land LLC, Midnight Florida Land 2 LLC, Mac LLC, and Charles Lane. Um, however, the only parcels that will be affected with this amendment 
would be uh, owned by Charles Lane. So the, the 0.588 par parcel owned by Charles Lane and the, uh, the 43-acre parcel owned by uh, Simon David LLC. Um, the request is to remove a total of 44.22 acres from the Midnight Farms PUD, and more of, it's referenced as Bear Island. Uh, the agent for this is Patrick Kennedy. Um, the overall PUD maintains about 1,634 acres, and the applicant's just wishing to remove that portion, 44.22 uh, acre portion referenced as Bear Island. Uh, the, the intent would be to rezone the 44.22 acres um, from PUD and revert it back to its original zoning class classification of agriculture. Just to provide a little bit of background, this was originally approved in 2000 as a Skinner Nursery PUD. It was amended in 2015, changing the name to Midnight Florida PUD. And then 2019 amendments were made to the PUD, reducing the commercial entitlements and residential entitlements. Um, currently, uh, they, at some point, the Bear Island was added to the PUD for reasons unknown. Um, as mentioned, there's 1,634 acres of the total PUD and that parcel known as Bear Island that's being removed, a portion of that is in Flagler County, but we are just rezoning that portion that's within Putnam County. Um, the PUD currently, as it sits now, has entitlements for 30 single family dwelling units, agricultural nurse, nursery use, an airstrip, and 7,000 square feet of educational uses. So the request of the amended PUD to remove the 44.2 acre portion of Bear Island um, and resume back to agriculture uh, consists of three parcels. One parcel owned by uh, Simon David is 43.64 acres. And there are two additional lots there. One's 0 0.58 zoned as Charles Lane. Um, we tried to get Joanne Woodward uh, in contact with her to rezone the entire island back to agriculture, but we were unsuccessful. But we're still going to try before it goes to the Board of County Commissioners, and hopefully we wouldn't have to amend the application to reflect that or anything. Um, so that would leave a total of 1,589.78 acres in the PUD zoning classification. Um, here's an aerial of the overall PUD. That little red island at the very top is the portion that's being removed from the PUD. The rest of the PUD is on the other side of the St. John's River. It's shown there in purple. Here's a close-up uh, aerial of the island. As you can see, the two lots, there's three, a total of three lots and two smaller lots. Here's the future land use designation map. And here's the current PUD zoning uh, of Bear Island. And as you can see, that portion is in Flagler County. Um, and just to point out, if it was reverted back to agricultural zoning, it only allowed for max density of one dwelling unit. Per 10 acres, I think the other lots are vested to their density, but uh, it's not increasing any more entitlements than any other ag zoning. So yeah, uh, staff recommends approval of the zoning designation from PUD to agriculture for this portion of Bear Island, and that pretty much concludes my presentation. And Mr. Patrick Kennedy is here to uh, speak on it if you guys have any questions. Are there any questions of staff? Okay, Patrick. Good evening, Patrick Kennedy, 673 Third Avenue, Wallaca, Florida. Um, here on behalf of the applicants, uh, I will just mention the uh, Joanne Woodward parcel that was spoken to. Um, we tried to locate that property owner. Uh, we believe she may have passed. Uh, taxes are in arrears for a year or two, and so we're trying to sort out that particular piece. Uh, I do believe your uh, code does allow you to rezone that property if uh, more than 51% of the property owners in the community, in this case, to uh, ask for it to be rezoned. That's how we couched it in our proposed uh, rezoning. I do, uh, I would say that you probably, we would probably need to do slightly different notice. If we're unable to get a hold of the property owner, you have to do a little bit more substantial notice, maybe treat it as a, uh, uh, if, and this is something I would ask you maybe for your input, treat it as a, uh, almost looks like a money-driven uh, rezoning rather than a property-owner-driven rezoning, you know, at our request. 
so to speak. And where it's a county driven rezoning, obviously there's a little more notice that's required because you know, you're changing someone's zoning without them asking you to. In this case, it will actually give the property, you know, more property rights, if you will. It's kind of, it doesn't make sense for this little five, six acre parcel to be a part of this PUD in the first place. I do believe it was clearly a, an accident. Uh, and the way they did the legal in 2018, uh, when we spoke to Mr. Charles Lane, who's the other owner, the only other small parcel there, he said he was not even aware it got rezoned to PUD in the first place. So <laughs> we think we think that's what happened in this case. It just kind of got wrapped up in the legal description mistakenly. Uh, and uh, it doesn't make any sense for that property owner to, to want to stay in the PUD. The PUD really only applies to the mainland parcel anyway, what's, what's defined by that. And in closing, we'll add, we're, we're coming back to, to adjust this PUD because it's, as I've explained to staff, and I think they've agreed in plain terms, it's junk. <laughs> it's not written very well. It doesn't make any sense. You got a 45-acre island in the PUD and nobody knows why. It doesn't say what you can do, what you can't do. It's just in the PUD. So my client wants to sit up uh, on the whole, but Bear Island is something that they, uh, they want to deal with now. So that's why they've asked for this rezoning to add and then they'll come back to try to make the PUD make more sense for everybody. That's, that's all I come with. Obviously, we, we agree with the staff recommendation. We would like to pursue cleaning up the whole island to ag. I think it would be in the best interest of the property owner uh, who's not been able to be a party to this and maybe talk to staff and the legal counsel about doing appropriate notice to make that happen <clears throat> if we're unable to get a hold of it. I've got a question. The, the 0.56 acres that this lady or whoever you know, can't get a hold of, mm -hmm. if, if, if this is zoned back to ag, can she not use that property for anything? Or um, obviously we can't, we can't, or I'm asking a question, can we rezone that to ag even though she hasn't consented to that? We, you can, and as I said, you'd have to do, I think in this case, you'd have to do what's called a little extra notice, including letter notice, in this case, the surrounding property owners, which is my clients, <laughs> including Mr. Lane, you've got to represent them in this situation. Um, and we've got to do our due diligence and try to get a hold of the property. But yeah, we did our own little research. Uh, we believe she has passed away. I did contact who we believe was a relative, but... She wisely refused to answer my questions, to be honest with you. She said, I don't know who you are. So I said, fair enough. So I didn't press her too hard. Uh, so uh, and we did send a letter to that address. They came back undeliverable. So, so we had to try to reach out. But it can be done. You just have to be extra precaution in, in how you do your notices. And it will, in my mind, and maybe staff can support or, or, or uh, speak only, but I believe it will actually put her back where she was before 2018 and the property rights she had then, rather than this, this PUD just doesn't even tell her what she can do with her property. It doesn't speak to it at all, which is, you know, kind of unheard of, but that's the way this thing reads. So. <clears throat> I, I, that would be my guess, but we haven't been able to speak to them, so we don't know for sure. I'm not. I'm unaware of speaking with them. I spoke with one property owner. It doesn't seem that anyone knew that they were included in the PUD. I have spoken with Mr. Lane. You know, he's similar situation, small lot on Bear Island. He said he had no idea it got absorbed into the PUD. And quite frankly, I don't think anybody at the time realized it kind of got slipped into the legal description. As I recall, um, it was just the Skinner property that was supposed to be part of the original PUD. Well, the Skinner property, but when the Midnight Farms folks purchased it, they also purchased the Colette Farm to the north right. and uh, Bear Island, and so they brought those in. Uh, but the guidance they were given as to the benefits and how that would work it was, was poor, and <laughs> there was no reason to bring Bear Island in. Colette Farm, possibly, but again, that we'll address on a larger scale uh, going forward, but the Bear Island's a more immediate need for my client. Yeah. Except for those two parcels. Just two parcels, 0.58. <laughs> the other yeah, they only they own all. It's in Flagler County. Okay. But as I understand it, we're not talking about that one lady's Miss Woodworth's parcel today. We're just talking about the other two. 
the main one plus the one small one owned by Mr. Lane. Correct. That is correct. Okay. Any other question? Yeah, I believe that I believe that she would be vested uh, to to the density of the comprehensive plan. Yeah. That's, I believe that that parcel has been there for quite some time and predates zoning laws. And for, for what it's worth, I don't know how buildable it is practically speaking, right. but from a perspective, I believe I would agree with the staff's opinion on that. But she's. And I've had that discussion with Mr. Lane, too. He would be entitled to have a single-family home on that lot if he wanted to. Yeah, another determining factor would be how many wetlands are on that parcel low and if it's even developable. Uh, are there are there any other questions for Mr. Kennedy? Thank you, Patrick. Thank you. Um, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion we approve PUD 22-00. Second. I have a motion and a second for approval. Do I have any discussion on the motion? Oh, I do. I have a second. Yeah. Do we have any discussion on the motion? Then I will call the vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 <coughs> aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Seven zero. Um, do we have any old business? Um, thanks for telling us about that case. Um, I guess we'll hear it again at length. Um, any new business? Madam Chair, I don't know if we, this isn't really under new business, but just so the record's clear, our board member, uh, Mr. Stanley Hodge, properly recused himself uh, from first two items on our agenda today because he is the landowner in question. The other thing I'd like to do is, is remind our, our board members to please <coughs> try to remember to use the uh, microphones simply because our record must be uh, maintained and uh, without that they have a hard time uh, making sure that it is because you, know, you never know when it's going to go to the uh, Board of County Commissioners so we need to make sure our record's clean. Thank you, gentlemen and ladies. Thank you for that. Rem Thank you for that reminder. Um, next order of business is approval of last month's minutes. Um, do I have a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of September. A second. Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. All opposed. Um, and now I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Very Technically, good. we have to vote to adjourn. So, all in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Thank you.